Welcome into Picks and Parlays Better's Edge. NFL Sunday, week 17. It's it's coming down to the final bits here, the final games. And a lot of teams, including the Saints and the Bucks, would like to win this week. The Bucks are on a four-game win streak, though. And I love this story of Baker in the Bucks. And the Saints right now, you know, they're even with Carr at quarterback, lost to the Bucks earlier this season. I know he came off of an injury, but they've sort of been a bit of a disappointment, in my opinion. And I love the rise of Baker and the Bucks. And right now, they're favored by a field goal at home. So, do you feel confident about Baker Mayfield getting it done first against of, a division opponent? First of all, a congratulations in order because you picked Baltimore against San Francisco. So I let's did. not just. I know. Let's just not uh, segue into picks without giving you. <laughs> we'll get some there. We'll talk about the Ravens. I'll make sure. Um, I'll make sure. Craig, I guess the eggnog hasn't worn off. He's not here. Yeah. <laughs> so people are going to have to go to the Picks and Parlays app to get his picks and his Sunday picks have been uh, really good this year. All right. So the line you said is what for Saints in, field goal in, in Bucks three. Well, you know I look at the Buccaneers right now as a team that might have an inflated value because Jacksonville is just in a total collapse Mm -hmm. mode. Mm -hmm. They've lost four in a row. Trevor Lawrence isn't 100%, whether it's shoulder, concussion, ankle, knee. I mean, the guy looks like the operation board from when we were a kid. (laughs) He does. And so I look at what Baker did there. He he had an awesome game against uh, Green Bay on the road the week before that, but there is a there is a sense of how long can this last for me, and the thing about this matchup is, you know, it's still very feasible that Tampa Bay could lose and then win in week week eighteen against I think Carolina mm-hmm. and still win the division, whereas New Orleans has to win this game to keep their playoff hopes alive. I also think with New Orleans they're downgraded because they just got beat by the Rams at home, but. I mean, look what the Rams have done to teams Mm -hmm. lately. So Tampa won the game in New Orleans earlier this year. I think the Saints get payback. I won't take them on the money line. I'll just take the three points and play them here because I am skeptical that Tampa Bay can keep this going. This has been a great month for them, and I think at some point it's going to end. I'm going to take Tampa Bay on the money line. I like this year, and I wasn't on the Baker and the Bucks train for most of the year. I wasn't, and I see what they've done, but there was just so much – skeptical four and seven I mean I right I that. just I couldn't get behind it it was a great story and now I'm like okay if this was any other game maybe not but against a divisional opponent where you have a chance Baker has such a chip on his shoulder all the time and such an ego to honestly get this done it could be in their favor and what sold me on just taking the Bucks straight up when you look back at the game the Saints really don't have an excuse for how they lost to the Bucks early on sure everyone wants to say well Derek Carr's shoulder might not have been 100 percent if it wasn't 100 percent then he shouldn't have been your starting quarterback yeah. in that game and he said his shoulder was fine there was no excuse for how they played they got blown out in that game the box score was so lopsided when you look down at the stats that I mean the the Tampa Bay spread the ball around a lot and guys were making an impact everywhere and just to me looking at that and then looking at the way the Saints played and how depleted it was Chris Olave had one target in that game one reception I just I find it very hard to believe that it's going to be such a drastic flip in this one that the Bucks can't pull it out with with how much the Saints are going to have to look back at this game and say, okay, what did we do in that game? Well, a lot. You've got to stop a lot at this point when you look at how lopsided it was. So I'm going to say Tampa Bay holds on to this momentum and Baker and the Bucks get this one done. I think we're going to see interception-prone Mayfield at some point here because mm-hmm. he's just Fair. been so perfect. And the Saints have really good corners. Mm-hmm. Very underrated. I mean, I know that the Rams – Exposed that somewhat last week, but that offense is just. But the Bucks on also fire ran right the ball really, really well, well against White, the Saints. White has been one of the more underrated, mm-hmm. especially fantasy football, has been a godsend for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just as much a part of what they've done offensively as Baker Mayfield has been. Absolutely. The last weeks. But I think because they have those options, yeah. that's why I had, at the end of the day, had to go with the Bucks. But going to be a great game, a good one to watch. The Dolphins and the Ravens, here's where I'll go ahead and, and gloat. I won't gloss over the fact that I rode with the Ravens last week. Did you think they were going to win? 
I did. I took them at that wow. five and a half number, but I, I it oh. was not it was not above me to say that they weren't going to win because I feel like I kept trying to wait for the Ravens to crash. And Lamar Jackson has made every bit of his pennies that he signed in yeah, the he offseason. Has. He really has. And we've seen the Niners against some certain teams this year where they've just looked bad. Brock Purdy's just not looked good. But here's here's the thing. Kittle and Ayuk tallied over 100 receiving yards, and Christian McCaffrey ran for 100 rushing yards on the ground, and they still lost to the Ravens. I like the way the Ravens team is rolling right now. So right now at home, they're a a three-and-a-half-point favorite over the Miami Dolphins. I think I might have to find a way to take the Ravens on the money line. I don't know if I love the three-and-a-half, but I'll go ahead and I'll put my chips in the basket because I rode with them last week and I'll take the Ravens at this number. I think they've looked like the better team. Mm-hmm. If we can look at Miami, we can say they've been great, but truthfully, they are squeaking out wins again. We knew they'd get back to that and they have. The Ravens just, to my point of every good player on the Niners had the stats that they typically do and the Ravens still found a way to win. So say what you want about the Baltimore Ravens and Miami Dolphins right now. But I think for similar reasons that I was able to pick the Ravens last week, I can pick them again this week, especially defensively and what they can do to teams. I'm going to say that they're going to go ahead and the Ravens clinch that one seed in the AFC with the win over the Dolphins. So I've got two concerns with them in this game. The first one is I'm always skeptical of betting on teams coming off games where they largely won because they mm-hmm. dominated the turnover battle mm-hmm. so decisively. I don't think that's something that that occurs week to week. I don't think because you force a lot of turnovers in one game, even we, we see it, I mean, one year a team leads the league in takeaways, the next season they're at the bottom. I mean, mm-hmm. it's been proven time and time again that it's largely a random thing. And I, I just don't see two of thrown four interceptions. To your point mm-hmm. about Kittle and Ayuk, let's say Purdy throws one interception instead mm-hmm. of four. I think San Francisco wins the game. I think San Fran- I think the Ravens won because they dominated the turnover battle. I don't see that happening again. I think it'll be closer to even. And I've said this all year on the show. I just get very worried about teams that have these huge wins. Absolutely. And then have to follow it up the next week. And I know with Miami you can make the same argument too mm-hmm. because – they beat Dallas, but they didn't blow them out the way that Baltimore did against San Francisco. And the thing I like about Miami for that game against Dallas is their defense held the Cowboys offense to just 20 points. Mm -hmm. And their defense right now, I think Jalen Ramsey's healthy. You've got their corners there. Even though they've had some injuries in their front seven, I think that they will not stop Baltimore's offense, but I think they'll slow them down enough I'm going to take the three and a half, but I'm very tempted to bet Miami on the money line to go there and beat them this week. We've seen Baltimore mm-hmm. drop a couple of games that they should win. Mm-hmm. Like Cleveland at home, they blew that game. That's an AFC North game, though. When I look back at How some of those the losses, at home they lost? I can't. Yeah, that was a bad one. But they're, every, everyone needed a bad game, right? You can say the same thing about the Niners, about the Dolphins, about the good teams this year. But to me, the Ravens have been the more consistent team the in Ravens this one. The Ravens have been the best team in the And it took me a while to get, to get behind them and really make a push for them at some of these numbers. It did. Not that I didn't like them, but because I've seen how many injuries they've had in the past and waiting for something to plague sure. the Ravens, I just really like the way Lamar Jackson is playing and has his team rolling. And because he's such a dual-threat quarterback, um, he's going to give Miami's Dolphin their defense a lot to handle. So I'm going to go ahead and go the opposite here we'll see who wins but I think that one's going to be one of the games of the week to watch another AFC North team the Cincinnati Bengals they are a seven point underdog hand heading into Arrowhead where at this point in the season typically teams would be afraid to maybe play the Chiefs I don't know if that's the case this year with what the Chiefs have looked like is this the downfall of Kansas City right now will they win by a touchdown or more I don't think so I don't really get why they're favored by a big number against anybody Right now, and and the reason why not only are they a big uh, favorite because of just the aura that still you know hovers around this team because they've won the Super Bowl twice, they have Patrick Mahomes, etc. You know, it also doesn't hurt that the Bengals look like garbage Mm -hmm. in their last game either. So both of these teams played nationally televised games last week, and everybody saw the Bengals warts and the Chiefs warts up close. They cancel each other out. They give the Chiefs the big uh, number. I've just seen Cincinnati, and I know Burrow's not playing, but there's no fear factor for them when they go into Kansas City. Mm -mm. They've gone there and they've won the AFC Championship game. They play them close. 
I know their defense has really taken a step back this year, but what has the Chiefs' offense done? They've Absolutely. scored 20 or fewer points in seven games this year. So I think the Chiefs will probably win, but I wouldn't. I don't feel good about laying a big number with no. them right now, Hannah. I don't either. I'm on the same side as you here. I have the Bengals at plus seven. I know what they looked like uh, against the Steelers. I get that. Um, the Steelers also had an anomaly of what and nobody in Pittsburgh expected to happen. So Another game where I don't think a quarterback's going to throw three interceptions no. again like Browning did against the Steelers. No, absolutely not. It's, and, and here's the thing that concerns me the most and why I don't think I would – take the I would go ahead and say oh the Chiefs definitely I would I would take them a 10 points here I wouldn't Patrick Mahomes has been under so much pressure his offensive line has not looked good and I think well, guys against can't get open yeah and I think against a hungry Bengals team right now that sort of needs this win and needs to go into Arrowhead and needs to win this for Joe Burrow I don't like that seven points with it for once at this point in the season I'm not liking what Patrick Mahomes can do I don't I think he can do a lot by himself, but at this point, yeah. he can't do everything by himself, and he doesn't even seem to have Travis Kelsey at this point um, in his back pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Bengals in that one with you. Wow. A little scary at this point in the season. We're taking the Bengals over the Chiefs with a you backup quarterback. You think Taylor Swift keeps going to these games, yeah. or does she now <laughs> maybe some distance? No, she's all in. She's all in. She's there. I know. Even on New Year's Eve, you don't think she's got bigger plans? I don't think so. I think Travis Kelsey is her plan in this one. I don't know, unless she's performing somewhere, but I think Taylor Swift is going to be there, but it's not going to matter. She's going to be no very disappointed. No offense to Kansas City, but that's not exactly the place where I would most ideally like to spend yeah, my no. New Year's. <laughs> Me neither. You know? I don't think so. I think I'd even rather go to Cincinnati, maybe. Who knows? Um, that's saying a lot. All right, moving into the the Sunday night game, the Packers and the Vikings. The Vikings right now a one-and-a-half-point favorite, but Minnesota goes into this one without TJ Hawkinson, potentially a tight end, without year. receiver Jordan Addison. Both players suffered injuries in the Detroit game, right? So right now, Hawkinson, we know, definitely won't be suiting up. But Addison's week-to-week -week with an ankle issue. The Vikings will have their star back in Justin Jefferson, though, so that's – always a good spotlight for them but will that end up mattering because it sounds this to me point, like the way you're setting this up that you like green bay i do i'll go injuries. ahead and lay it out there That's because the of the injuries it sounded truthfully because these teams sometimes seem so even to me in this game looking down at it and that one and a half point number tells you everything you need to know it is sort of a pick em. i had to look at the team less affected by injuries at this point in the season and green bay's defense has at times looked really good so i'm gonna go ahead and say green bay i'll take them on the money line they pull this one out as the under dog in Minnesota because they have the less injury ridden team and they have a good defense at this point to yeah, shut down Minnesota. I agree with you. I mean, Green Bay is one of these teams and look, there's probably a dozen teams we could say this about, maybe more, where there's just so much volatility and it's really difficult to predict. This is why it's difficult to bet NBA, NFL games because you don't know what you're going to get week to week. I think their best, they're like when they're at their best, they they can beat maybe not San Francisco, but I think they could beat anybody else in the NFC playoffs in a in a one game mm -hmm. scenario. We saw them go to Detroit on Thanksgiving and handle Detroit and move the ball up and down on them. Then we see them go to a place like New York and get beat by Tommy DeVito and the Giants. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they might be the pendulum swinging back in their direction. I think they're going to go to Minnesota and win this game. I think they're going to beat the Bears at home next week too that would have them with a nine and eight record i don't know what their tiebreakers are but they could make the playoffs so mm -hmm. i think they still have a lot to play for minnesota you saw it in the detroit game the, i think that now with o'connell i would not be surprised that at some point either in this game he goes back to dobbs or even plays jaron hall the rookie mm -hmm. who originally got hurt uh in the game where dobbs went in uh, against atlanta i think he's just was uh be beside himself with the turnovers from Mullins and was pulling his hair out. Mullins makes some good plays, but also makes some really stupid plays. Mm -hmm. And I think in this game, that'll be the difference again in Green Bay. He's going to get a road win that keeps them alive in the playoff hunt. I'm going to uh, take him on the money line, too. Absolutely. Is that your best bet of the no, week, or do you have a better it's one? it's not. My best bet is a bounce-back game. Okay, tell bounce me more. Back. I like the Eagles to cover a big number against Arizona. Wow, that yeah. one's at thir 10. That 10 is 10 and, half? and, 10 and a half. half. It is a big number, and we saw that even though the Eagles historically owned the Giants, they weren't able to do that, and they kept New York alive. Uh, Arizona almost had a 30 spot hung on them by the Bears offense. I like, the, and look, the Eagles defense right now, 
you know, the, the jury's out on them. They're a very suspect unit. But I have it's it's the old defensive coordinator mm-hmm. who's coach of the of Arizona now. I just think that there's gonna be all week a sense in that building like we've gotta prove to ourselves again that we're an elite team. And I think they're gonna not mm-hmm. go through the motions and try to just win a game. I think they're gonna look to pound Arizona and show themselves and everybody else that they can still do damage that they're the defending NFC champs. And they have to. Right, so that's, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's like, for me, if Philadelphia can't show that they can blow out a team like this that's competing with uh, Carolina for the number one pick in the draft, then I already think something's partially broken. I'll really be all the way out on Philadelphia if they can't, on New Year's Eve, just stomp a mud hole in Arizona. So I'm taking them to win big. The reason I'd like, I'd tell everybody maybe to to tail his pick in that one is because Pony hasn't been super high on the Eagles this no, year. So this for you to like say that pro. is big, this isn't like a pro Eagles thing, yeah. something you've been doing all year. No. So I like that one there. And I usually like underdogs. Right. And a, a d- double digit line. Yeah. So, all right, this is a big one. This Did you is a make big your thing best here. bet? I'm gonna. I was doubling down um, on on Green Bay in that one after yeah, I, I went through that game. I could tell the way that you were. I did. I like that one. Interest. That was the game that I was like, okay, I'm actually excited to talk about this one week. I feel good about Green Bay. <laughs> when I can pick them, I like to pick them. I sort of like the story of where they are right now. And Minnesota had everything in their hands early in the season, and Kirk Cousins right. was just such a deflation for them. So I'll go ahead and take uh, Green Bay to be on the rise, and like you were saying, maybe even win next week as well and finish the season strong. So we'll see what happens there this is picks and parlays better's edge craig has been fantastic on sundays as well so make sure you head over to that picks and parlays app